What always strikes me about AliExpress homage watches is how, 9 times out of 10, they disappoint. Not an immediate disappointment, the kind a woman must have when she gives birth to a child fathered by Boris Johnson, but a gradual disappointment, like that of a child realising they're being fathered by Boris Johnson. While first you think, you must have really got lucky, eventually you're left with the feeling that you've actually been sort of ripped off, the bezel doesn't align, the bracelet's a bit meh. That's why I wanted to share a watch that books this trend. The Seastern Vintage Sub 600T. Seastern's Doxa Sub 600T homage. Uh, yeah, Seastern might have to work on that model name. Mm. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please subscribe. And if you like the video, hit that like button. Every subscriber really helps out the channel. You've probably seen somebody review a Seastern watch by now. Random Rob recently dipped his toe in the water with Seastern's 300T homage. Now I'm doing it. Seastern gave me a $40 discount on this, so I paid $160, or about 150 quid, rather than $200, but I'm reviewing this as a $200 watch. The general consensus you'll find hard to avoid is that these watches punch well above their weight for the price. I know, you've heard that one before, right? Homage brand punches above its weight in terms of finishing for the price. But here's why it's generally true in the case of Seastern. I'll start where porn ends, the finishing. We'll come on to the bracelet in more detail later, but on a purely aesthetic level, this looks fantastic. The links articulate around the wrist, and because of the blocky facets, the light reflects all over the place and actually make it look a bit of a blingy diver. That's no bad thing. Nor are, luckily, the male end links. The 40mm diameter and relatively short 47mm lug to lug mean the bracelet doesn't drape too far over the wrists, even on my pale 6.5 incher. While we're on numbers, here are the key ones to consider should you be thinking of picking this up. Alright, nerds, you've had your fun. Back to the airy fairy descriptions I'm trying to carve a niche out of. So, the clasp, sadly, is one of those off-the-shelf milled types that you tend to get at this price point. It's a bit rattly, and even when it's been secured, the keeper feels like it's on the verge of coming loose, which is about as reassuring as Shell and BP telling you they're at the forefront of tackling climate change. Thankfully, there's plenty of micro-adjustments, so when the sea levels do rise, you can tighten the bracelet and brace yourself for the sweet taste of Shell's E10 unleaded, mixed with some sewage and seaweed. It's a good thing then that the murkiness of the water engulfing your house won't make this watch any less legible. Check this loom out. The BGW9 applied here is nice and potent with good longevity, and that includes the loomed date disc. I'd argue that if you were 200 meters below sea level though, and your first thought was to check the date, you need to get your priorities right. Still, it's a pretty cool feature to have and a nice touch for them to have thought about. Ditto the ceramic bezel insert. This is available with a stainless steel insert as well, for a bit less dosh, $10 less to be precise. But the ceramic insert really does add to the whole look of the piece, and the black is the exact same tone as the black of the dial. Said dial is nice and clear thanks to the blue AR coating on the underside of the sapphire crystal. I filmed this in bright sunlight a lot, and thanks to that generous helping of AR coating, I was granted the small mercy of not having to see my own face in the reflection of the glass something which I spare you viewers of as well. The head of the watch, including that bezel, is finished immaculately. The transitions from brushed and polished facets are impeccable, and thankfully there's no sharp edges to take the shine off that either. The little starfish on the crown, as well as the very nicely engraved screw on case back, are classy flourishes which tie into the name of the brand. Seastern is German for starfish. I don't know what the German is for wave, there's one of those too. Well, that's it. Okay, stop. Bezel time. The bezel action is clicky and solid, plus it aligns perfectly which can be one of those things that keeps you up at night whilst you're waiting the four years or so for an AliExpress watch to arrive. Oh, and on that, 
this took about 10 days to get to me in the UK. Back to the bezel. There is some back play, but it's almost like a spring as you pull it that then jumps back into place, so it's not a problem at all. Okay, I said we'd come back to the bracelet, and although it looks good, because of the subpar clasp, I've mainly been wearing this on a Tropic style strap. This really sets off that retro look and can make it a whole lot more breathable in the summer. You can see for yourself just how good this combo is, and that 20mm lug width means you'll probably have loads of straps knocking around to try it out on. You could always just replace the clasp of course, because that does let down a comfortable bracelet with plenty of flex in it, and which also doesn't nip any hairs, despite how much it looks like it could, a la the Casio F91. So the clasp is the first negative, second is the movement. It's a Seiko NH35, that's fine, it really is. At about $200, it's the movement you would expect. It hacks, it hand winds, and the crown action here is solid. It does make the watch thicker though, at 14.5mm. That would be okay if it was 600 meters water resistant, as that pretty brazen reference number would suggest, but it isn't. It's just 200 meters. So why not offer this with a PT5000 and make the watch a little slimmer? You don't have to pay homage to everything. The other problem I have with this model here is the hour hand. Look at it. I haven't seen quite such an obvious small hand problem since Donald Trump was in office. I did contact C Stern about it, and they said they had now replaced the hour hand with a more substantial one. But why did nobody see this absolute chode of an hour hand and notice it was off? That's another thing that annoys me about AliExpress homages. Often it takes until about version 37 until someone has actually zoomed in on the Google image of the watch that they're homaging. C Stern did send me the new handset, or apparently have, but I'll happily admit that I'm no tinkerer, and between all the other things I've got to do, replacing the handset on a watch neither I nor C Stern designed doesn't fall under my priorities. Luckily, if you do pick it up now, it should ship with the updated handset. I would call them sending me the hands a goodwill gesture, but a better one would to just get the designs right the first time round and save me whinging about it later. Okay, so is the hype justified? Is Seastern the new San Martin? Well, I'd say you're better off buying one of these than a similarly priced San Martin, for what it's worth. My favourite San Martins now are priced closer to $300 rather than $200. I wouldn't pay that for this C Stern. However, I do think that if you're comfortable wearing a homage watch, but also hate constantly telling people that, no, it's not a Rolex, a homage to a more obscure enthusiast piece might just be the ticket. I mean, I'm yet to be asked, hey, is that a Doxa Sub 600T reissue? My advice is, pay the extra $10 for the ceramic bezel insert, consider picking up a replacement clasp, and make sure it's got the new handset. Then you've got a very solid watch that justifies $200 from C Stern. Take it from me, a faceless voice on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing if you've done so. If not, I'll let Tony say it again. What are you fucking stupid, huh? Links are in the description if you want to pick up one of these, but they're not affiliate links or anything like that, so none of your hard-earned cash is going to go towards heating my home this winter, I swear. See you in the next one.